Hey guys, Filthy Robot here. Uh, so I just completed my very first IRL draft. Uh, I think I did one of these as a kid more than 20 years ago. One time only booster draft as a kid. This was the first one I've done since I've been an adult. And I played it for the very first time tonight, my time. So uh, M19 was the format, um, just a standard booster draft, three booster uh, packs passed around. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys my deck, talk about the experience for me, and otherwise just uh, share it with you guys. I had a lot of fun. I had a blast. Uh, surprisingly, it was fairly nerve-wracking for me. Don't know why. Got a little bit of that adrenaline high, uh, a little shaky, which is kind of fucking weird. I've played games all day, every day. Don't feel that way, but I felt that way today in person. Um, just at my local store. Anyways, so I ended up with white-blue uh, aggression with the idea of going wide. My first pick was Lena. I picked it over a Pegasus Courser. It was probably the second best part of that pack. Uh, and my second pick, I think, was a uh, Surge Mare. Uh, second pack was pretty weak. I think third pick was Mystic Archaeologist. And once I had those, I've kind of had the core of the deck. I wanted to show you guys the deck I ended up drafting. Um, this was the deck itself. You guys can see right here. Uh, the goal was to be a white, blue, a wide aggro deck. The plan being to put down creatures of reasonable combat strength that don't get removed, a little bit sticky or a little bit wide, and uh, take that and then push in with uh, wide effects like Inspired Charge and Sleep, uh, tempo effects like Sleep, etc. Star Crown Stag so they can't block and then just value them down. Um, it worked reasonably well. Uh, it was a three round draft. My first round I went 2 0, my second round I went 2 0, and my third round I lost. Uh, I went one and two. That was the finals. I took second place uh, in the draft for the night, uh, but did end up losing in the final round to a different deck. I want to talk you through a couple of these things. The deck itself was okay. The, the cards that ended up overperforming relative to my expectations were sleep. Sleep won me three games outright, just three games straight up won by sleep. Um, Nightly Valor outperformed my expectations. I think I played it in a couple games where it did extraordinarily well. Uh, the Stags, I can't say they outperformed. They performed as expected. This card is nuts. I um, <clears throat> Cards that underperformed, Lena. Uh, I basically drafted this card early, kept it in my deck. I think I drew it in one game, didn't play it. Played it in zero games total. Did nothing for me, never created a token. Um, Angel of the Dawn, I think this card's incredible. I don't regret playing this at all. I kind of regret playing Lena, but I don't regret playing Angel of the Dawn whatsoever. Card's amazing. I played it once, it got countered. To be fair, he lost to the sleep in that game. He just countered the Angel of Dawn past the point it mattered. I don't know why he could have countered the sleep. He didn't. Um, cards that overperformed. Uh, Leonin Vanguard uh, overperformed, getting in way too much damage relative to its value, way too much life for me. Gallant Cav overperformed. Star Crown Stags overperformed. Uh, Aerial Engineer, surprisingly, over overperformed. I only had two artifacts in the deck. I had the Sentinel and the uh, Axe, and this was a 4-4 flyer. Uh, both games I played it, but really the MVP of this deck was definitely Sleep. Um, let me talk about this deck. I missed three drops. I found it surprisingly harder in real life. Um, so I'm used to drafting like this, right? I see the deck layout on the side. I can switch over here. I can look at the cards sorted by cost, switch over to here, look at how it looks like as drafting like this. Drafting face down uh, onto just like a pile was really hard for me. I have never done it before. It was uh, interesting for me. I underdrafted threes. Snap picked the Luminous Bonds. Didn't draw these anywhere near enough. I won... I won games I was already winning with Luminous Bonds and the games that I needed Luminous Bonds didn't draw them. They would have absolutely won me the games I lost. I lost two games to a white blue um, flying phantom deck. So you guys know the one three phantom, Supreme Phantom? My opponent had three of these. Three of these fucking things, which are really good synergetically. And he was playing blue green with a fuck ton of enchants. He had a prestigious... Uh, uh, prestigious Growth or whatever the hell it is, the one that gives 7-7 seven, seven, uh, and Trample. He had Oaken Form and he had Blanchwood Armor and he had Wild uh, Thorns of Wildwood or whatever the hell it was called. Uh, and his, his flyers were super buffed. 
Oh, an exclusion mage, a couple other good cards. This deck was really good. The opponent who beat, beat me. The, the thing that bothers me the most is um, land lands were an issue for me. So of I played seven games. I played uh, as I said, I went two and zero in the first round, two and zero in the second round. I went one and two in the third round. Um, of those seven games, I mulliganed three times each for once. Um, had some mana issues for my final opponent, unfortunately. Uh, my final opponent, I sideboarded, but I didn't remember it. So I won the first game, forgot to sideboard the second game, which was so weird. You know, you play online, it puts you in a sideboard time. You get a minute and a half. I just totally forgot versus my opponent. Shuffled, played the second game, lost the second game, and didn't sideboard. Third game, I sideboarded in um, and invoked the divine and two, uh, totally lost and a, and a disperse. Uh, versus my opponent to deal with his enchantments, but I got land screwed on the third game. I ended up totally losting uh, one of his creatures, which cost him a Blanchwood Armors and uh, and a Wildwood, but he then drew the prestigious growth and played it on his other flyer and killed me with that. And if I hadn't been land screwed, I had the fucking Disperse in hand. So I liked my sideboard picks. It was really great. It just got land screwed in that final matchup. Um, I had a blast. I, I'm here right now. I went to a bar afterwards, had a couple drinks with my wife, had a lot of fun at the game i'm here recording this right now because i wanted to share this with you super fucking fun this game has its claws in me so deep right now wanted to share the deck um what else to talk about in this deck um missed by three drops this i think was a uh a symptom of two things the opponent to my right drafted blue and the opponent to my left so my opponent to the right was blue green and my opponent my to my left in the draft was uh white black and between them they ate pretty hard into my three drops i think the only three drops i saw was a pegasus as a first pick which i passed for the lena i think i saw a um the line breaker the three two elephant uh, let's see if i can find him for you guys uh how is that not in there what oh it's because it's in blue this guy right here the loxodon line breaker uh, and I think I picked up something pretty valuable over him. I want to say I picked either a Surge Mare or a Stag over him, so he wasn't a very good pick for me. Uh, and other than that, I really didn't see a lot of three drop creatures. I ended up picking the Sentinel pretty much for artifact synergy and just to have a three drop. At some point I looked through my deck, I'm like, where the hell are my three drops? What am I gonna do with this? So that was a little bit painful. There were a lot of games where I opened and it was open with a one or sometimes a two, pass three and play four. Um, Gallant Cab overperformed if I had to pick another card for that. Uh, this card was on four a lot, Stag Stags at four a lot, but I missed those three drops. This deck missed the three drop aggro pretty hard. Um, yeah, overall, I never played the card. It's funny. It's funny how this works out because this is a li much more limited format than I'm used to. I'm limited. I'm used to playing uh, either five wins or two losses, whatever comes first, competitive draft, right, of match-wise. And this was three games. This was only three matches total, so much fewer games. I only drew Lena once, never got to play her. Um, I drew Inspired Charge a number of times and never got to play it. Uh, twice I had it in my hand and didn't have white mana to play it. I won both those games, but it was still annoying. I ended up with my mana base with eight islands, seven plains, and two meandering rivers. The thought process for me was I wanted to play Surge Mares early, and I did get to play Surge Mare every time I drew it, but I wasn't able always to play um, Inspired Charge. Maybe I should have tweaked that, maybe not. Um, as I said, Sleep overperformed, played that a lot. Snapping Drake was pretty good for me. Sentinel was fine. I won a game with the Sentinel. Mystic Archaeologist drew me two cards total. I played it on curve twice. Uh, it drew me cards once in one of those games. Um, I don't know about Mighty Leap. I like one combat trick in my decks, especially when my decks are light on removal. And we only had two Luminous Bonds for removal here. The games I lost... The final games, if I had drawn Luminous Bonds in either of those, it would have been a total blowout in my favor. The guy was stacking three fucking enchantments on his creatures. It was killing me that I didn't have answers to that. And one of those games, I just totally, absolutely forgot to sideboard at all. The second game. First game I won, second game I forgot to sideboard. Drafting was a bit weird. Um, it was pretty informal. Uh, the players uh, seemed to be fine with... Um, some of them were laughing about their picks and talking about their picks in the, the draft itself. Um, when they created their decks, everyone at the table except for me created their decks face up. I created my decks face down um, so I could see a lot of their decks ahead of time, the two people around me. Um, I tried not to go into that. So I knew in, the third, in my third match, I knew the player I was playing against was running three of those spirits because I'd heard that. 
I'd heard him say, I'd heard other players say he was running three Supreme Spirits. And I thought it was pretty much cheating to sideboard before that. I don't know if the rules allowed it or not. So I didn't side before, sideboard before that. Beat him the first game. And at that point, I was feeling a little cocky. I'm like, I'm 5-0. and oh. I think I can take the next game. The second game of the match the, of the set was very close. And I lost. And then I sideboarded. And then the third game I lost uh, from not getting land draws. I was stuck on three for two turns and then couldn't quite get back in tempo with his enchantments, which is too bad because I had the sideboard cards to do it. Overall, oh my God, I had so much fun with this, guys. I don't know how to say it more than that. I want to share this with you guys. I'm recording this video now, a couple beers in post-fact. Had a blast, super fun. Um, cyborg didn't see a whole lot of use over here. I saw Disperse versus that player and one other player who was playing enchants. Uh, there weren't two essence scatters. I don't know why I have two there. I only had one essence scatter. Um, I never sideboarded essence scatter in. I sideboarded invoked a divine in versus him and a player who I suspected was running lots of disables. It didn't do me any value. Never played the card. Sideboarded a second uncomfortable chill in versus one player. Did get a little bit of value out of that. Um, oh, a make make a stand also blew that that outperformed as well. This card is amazing. I blew a player out entirely uh, where he attacked into me on what he thought was basically either a winning attack or an attack where. Uh, he would wipe my board, and I killed three of his creatures for none of mine, and then killed him two turns later. Because of that, this card overperformed. Uh, Uncomfortable Chill, I sideboarded in once. Dwarven Priest, I sideboarded in twice versus decks that were otherwise aggressive. Never sideboarded in the Inspired Charge. Sideboarded in the Totally Lost versus the guy who was running heavy enchantments. Drew played it. It did well for me, but it wasn't quite enough when I got stuck on lands twice. Uh, overall, I liked the deck. I was surprised in drafting. In person drafting was slightly different than drafting versus bots. I got some really weird things. I got a Meandering River, second to last pick. I got a Aerial Engineer, second to last pick. Uh, I got Luminous Bonds on like pick four or pick five out of a out of a pack. I got Angel of Dawn on like pick four. I got Stag on like pick six or seven. Uh, basically, around me. Um, the players picked blue and white in one direction, but I got I got past stuff that I was never expecting. Sleep was like a pick like six out of a pack or pick seven, and I think in part it was because uh, not all the players were equally of equal skill level there. But I think actually most of it was the fact that you cut a color in that game. You cut a color in real life, the players respect that, and that means you get rewarded by the fact that colors come all the way around when you cut out of that. Um, overall. Had an absolute blast. I will be playing that again. Um, I'm not sure if this is useful to you guys or not, if this is fun or not, if you want to hear about this from me or not. Um, I wanted to share, and I'd be happy to do a little recap video of these when I come back for them. Probably more sober next time, but maybe not. Um, my wife told me afterwards, she was like, uh, I, I, was, I texted her when I was done. I'm like, uh, come out and grab a beer with me at a bar. And uh, she's like, I don't have any clothes on, and I don't want to go out. And I'm like, tough. And we went out to a bar, and then she was... Uh, we were chatting about it and she's like, I expected you to win. And I'm like, wow, thanks baby. I haven't played I haven't played MTG in person in 20 years. It's my first time, second time ever drafting. And I came in second and I barely came in second. I almost came in first and uh, didn't quite manage to win. But anyways, that was apparently the expectations I was going into it. Um, as I said, I uh, came out of this with uh, five wins, two losses, uh, came out second overall. Um, yeah, picked up a couple packs. You want me to share the packs? I'll share the packs. Hold on a second. Uh, two packs were the reward for coming in second. Uh, the first pack was a... How do I do this? on? Can I do this on stream? I don't know if I can do this spreading this. All right. Talarian Scholar, uh, Act of Treason, Knight's Pledge, uh, uncomfortable chill. It's a bit weird doing this in camera. Uh, hired blade. I think this is talons of wildwood. Yes. Uh, cav cav master. Uh, cav cavalry drill master. I think it is spark tongue dragon. Uh, what is this card? Wall of vines. That was played against me today. Luminous bonds. Uh, psychic corrosion. Uh, what is this? Rogues gloves. Herald of Faith, not with the Vampire Sovereign, which I've never seen whatsoever. And Chaos One was one of my packs. And the other pack I won was, uh, I think there was a Swamp in that pack as well. And then this pack was Dwindle, uh, Sure Strike, Two-Headed Zombie, 
Um, Talons of Wildwood again. Is this card? Thornhide Wolves. Gallant Cav. Uh, Skeleton Archer. Wall of Mist. Take Vengeance. Is this card? Root Snare. Uh, the Encyclopedia. Arcane Encyclopedia. Vampire. Uh, Regal Blood Lord. Gutter Snipe, uh, Valent Knight is my other rare, and then a Plains. So pretty unexciting packs to open as rewards, but overall still a really, really, really good time. I'm absolutely going back next week. Um, it was different playing in person. I don't think I made too many mistakes in person. There were a couple times where I had to like double count like the powers and toughness of creatures because there was like one play one game I was playing, my opponent had a spirit in play and a bunch of enchants and I'm used to the computer just calculating for that for me. Um, there were a couple times where uh, I wanted to, where I just didn't do the phases totally correctly, but mostly it was okay. Um, the players were friendly, not massively friendly, but not unfriendly either. Um, I don't think I was corrected on anything too much overall pretty good. Anyways, guys, uh, just wanted to do a quick recap while this was fresh in my head to pass this on to you guys, uh, let you know how that experience went for me and uh, just keep you up to date. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, hopefully you're enjoying the Magic the Gathering content because this game has me hooked right now. So anyways, thanks for watching. See you soon.